I'm so tired of GPU reviews. Hi guys, Nada here, and look, here we have another GPU. So this is the AMD Radeon RX 5600 XT, a brand new card from uh, AMD that just came out today, and it's supposed to cost $280 in the US or 300 euros here in Europe. So as you can guess, it is supposed to compete with NVIDIA's GTX 1660 Ti. But before I dive into the review of this card, I just need to get something off my chest. I am so tired of GPU launches and all the drama connected to it. I mean, there's so many surprise plot twists and it just looks like a very terrible reality TV show with titles like, oh my god, you won't believe what Nvidia did next, and vice versa. And the same happened with this card. So we got the sample of the 5600 XT about a week ago and I was so happy because we usually don't get that much time to, you know, benchmark everything and prepare a proper review. So we tested it at the start and it was doing exactly what we expected it to do. It was just a bit faster than the 1660 Ti for a similar price. But then the drama started. So the first thing Nvidia did, uh, they uh, jumped right in and they reduced the price of the RTX 2060, making it better performing for $20 more, which is a great price. But little did they know it was AMD's trick all along because they increased the performance of the 5600 XT by a lot, making it perform better than the RTX 2060 in almost all benchmarks for $20 dollars less. Now, I do understand that, you know, they need to play this game and I do understand it is very interesting for the end user, but it's actually us, the reviewers, that are standing on the losing end because it takes time to benchmark everything and every time a new BIOS comes out, we have to go back to the start and redo everything. I mean, we got the BIOS updates of these two cards this morning but it doesn't really matter because I'm actually not allowed to talk about these two cards for some unexplained reason. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, dig into this awesome review of yet another GPU. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Cooler Master and their MM711 Ultralight Gaming Mouse. With a top optical sensor, solid Omron switches, beautiful RGB and a weight of only 60 grams, the MM711 is a great mouse for serious gamers and all-around users alike. Check it out using the links in the description below. Now, as you've probably watched dozens of GPU reviews in the past year or so, let's just not waste time and get straight into what you really need to know. For our testing, AMD sent us the Sapphire Pulse OC model. This is an MSRP card, so it will cost $280 or 300 euros. Now that money gets you a decent looking two fan card with a reasonable heatsink underneath that covers the chip, memory modules and VRMs, all the key ingredients to a decent GPU. It also comes with a metal backplate. Now personally I'm not a big fan of red details, but that is completely subjective. You will need a single 8 pin connector to power this card and probably most other cards, although some will come with an extra power connector. I expect most RX 5600 XT cards to come with three display ports and one HDMI port. As far as I know, there is no HDMI 2.1 yet. So originally the 5600 XT is supposed to have the same chip that was used for the 5700 non-XT. And the original version had the same amount of cores, lower clock speed, lower memory speed and 6 gigabytes of RAM instead of 8. But with this last minute update, AMD actually buffed this card completely. So now it has the same amount of cores, it has similar clock speed, it has similar memory speeds, but it still has two gigabytes of memory less. So it has six gigabytes instead of eight, and it has a smaller memory bus. So this is pretty much an RX 5700 six gigabyte version. And surprise, surprise, when we look at the benchmarks, they're exactly like we expected them to be. In most games, the RX 5600 XT is so close to a similar RX 5700 that you can't really tell the difference. More importantly is that it's a lot faster than the GTX 1660 Ti, which is supposed to cost the same, and in most games, it is even faster than the RTX 2060, which even after the price drop from last week should still be more expensive. Now, I'm sure that Nvidia will argue that RTX is still a thing, but as I said before, I think the value of RTX begins at the 2070 and above. 
So, RX 5600 XT seems to make the most sense for 1080p gaming. You can run all the latest titles at very high or ultra settings, but it actually does a decent job as an entry-level 1440p card, as long as you're okay with medium or high settings in heavier titles. So I guess this is the first time that we actually see a sub $300 card that is uh, good for 1440p experience. Although, if you're serious about Quad HD gaming, I would still suggest to invest a bit more and go for the 5700 XT. Interestingly enough, it does all that at low power consumption as well. Slightly lower than even the slightly slower RTX 2060. So the days when AMD offered more performance per dollar, but at a higher power cost, seem way behind us. But there is still the topic of software. AMD wants to push the fact that they have some nice features like image sharpening and anti-lag. But in reality, we see both AMD and Nvidia catch on when something is popular. Nvidia now too has a feature similar to AMD's Radeon chill. And even though Radeon Boost is interesting with dynamically lowering the resolution during fast movements in games for a smoother experience while gaming, I really wonder if that will stay exclusive for very long or how much consumers really care about it in the first place. Since the feature set of the uh, 5600 XT is pretty much the same as other Navi cards, I'm not gonna get into those in this video. I do want to point out, however, is that I've seen on social media channels that some other reviewers had some problems with the drivers, especially when it comes to manual fan curves. But in all the testing we've done so far in the last couple of days with all the BIOS uh, updates and retests, we actually had zero problems with stability and we had zero problems with games running properly. So uh, if you're not going to get into tweaking and changing the fan curves, the card should work just fine. Since I cannot talk about these two cards uh, right here in this video, uh, I am going to make a comparison video of custom cards, so make sure you come back in a few days and check that video out. But now I'm just going to focus on the Sapphire Pulse OC that I have right here. On its own, it is no surprise that the decent sized cooling solution that Sapphire built here doesn't have a problem with such a low power card. I measured 65 degrees Celsius average on the chip during the stress test, with a very low, almost inaudible noise production of 35.8 decibels at 50 centimeters distance. Now both Gigabyte and Aces will have to make sure their fancier looking cooling solutions don't end up costing too much, because this Sapphire does a really good job overall and it comes at MSRP. So yeah, let's wrap it up for the 5600 XT or, you know, you can call it the 5700 6 gigabyte version because that is pretty much what this card is. And you can uh, say that this is a boring launch or wonder why AMD didn't just lower the price of the 5700 or, you know, why are they playing so many games with Nvidia to begin with? But at the end of the day, it is actually a great card. It is performing better than the RTX 2060 for a lower price and it is outperforming the GTX 1660 Ti by a lot for a similar price. Now, this is a great card on paper for 1080p gaming and it's a great card for an entry-level Quad HD gaming if you want to get decent performance for a lower price. So the big question is if AMD is going to live up to their promise of pricing like they did with the RX 5700 XT for example and we all love that launch. But the RX 5500 XT launch was pretty much a disaster because after the release you couldn't find a single card at MSRP, they were all much more expensive and that kind of created some negative feedback. So I really hope that they do what they promised because then we will be as excited about this launch as we were about the RX 5700 XT launch. Now that's it for today, thank you so much for watching, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this card and about this review, don't forget to come back in a few days to see the comparison video of custom cards and yeah, see you in the next one, bye!